Exodus. I've been uh, here lately. I've been sort of uh, leaning towards this book. I, I've uh, been interested in the, uh, this man by the name of Moses. Uh, but in the book of Exodus chapter 3, I will read from this text this morning in Exodus chapter 3. I appreciate the invitation to be back again this year in the month of June, the first week of the month of June uh, for a revival meeting. It was the only week that I had open. And uh, preacher asked me to come back and I'm very, very appreciative of the opportunity to be back in revival meeting. Just something about Brother Stanley Layton I like. I think it's Amen. his wife. That's right. Amen. <laughs> She's very kind. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But I appreciate Brother Stanley. I, I'm telling you, every time I've been around him, I, I'm just, I'm just, just feel like I'm around a gracious man. Amen. And uh, uh, and I, I, no doubt I'm around a great man. But I appreciate his graciousness, and I'm very appreciative of of our friendship over these years. In the book of Exodus chapter 3, if you're glad to be here, just say amen. 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 If you're really glad to be here, why don't you give your neighbor a dollar, baby? <laughs> See how happy you really are. Amen. I, I know, look at it. Some preaching out. Some preaching out. want you the neighbor to give. Amen. All right. Exodus chapter 3. Look with me, please, this morning, beginning in verse 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this, notice these two little words, great sight, and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. You know, many times we talk about the burning of bush. But there's a greater emphasis here than just the bush on fire. Yeah, amen. I would love for you to see this text this morning. No wonder Moses called this a great sight. I mean, this is an amazing sight to behold yeah. that this bush is burning. <coughs> Someone said to me some years ago, I'm a reader. Uh, I love books. And uh, I was reading behind uh, an author some years ago, and he made mention that he felt that this bush was a supernatural bush. Now, I contend against that. I, I'm purposely against that. Uh, I don't think this was a supernatural bush. Uh, any old bush will burn when God's in it. Trust me. It, it, it is the God of the bush. Many times we want to put emphasis up on carnal things. Come on, we, we ought to behold supernatural things. Yes, right. We ought to behold a supernatural work. When is the last time that you beheld something that you felt like that was a great sight? Not, not, not talking about carnal or natural. I'm talking about a work of the Lord. Oh, when is the last time that you just stood in amazement that the Lord had just showed himself strong. I mean, it rattled your cage, friend. You just knew that it was more than what you could do. This 
is something that God did and it is a supernatural work. Yeah. Yeah. So I contend this morning to say to you, any old bush of burn when God's in it. That's right. But the Bible says here, and I'm going to move on a little further. I want to go to chapter 2. But the Bible says here that it was a great sight. And he wandered. It, can I pause for a moment to say that this great sight brought about a wonder? He wondered why the bush is not burned. I mean, can I tell you this morning that any time that we behold a great sight that the Lord now is showing Himself strong, it should bring about a wonder. That we stand in wonder. Sort of like, wow. I mean, wow. I mean, I'm talking about the wow factor. Amen. That's right. I'm talking about something that stop you in your tracks and cause you to just say, wow! Yeah. 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 Right. I mean, you know, if the Lord moved the mountain in front of your eyes, you'd probably say, wow! Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Amen. Yeah. You know, if the Lord stood the sun still for three hours and it did not move, you'd probably say, wow! If the Lord parted the waters and caused you to walk across on dry ground, you'd probably say, wow. Yeah. If you was thrown into a burning fire furnace heated seven times hotter and you got to walk around in the midst of the fire, you'd probably say, wow. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I could go on with these stories in the Bible. But I'm just saying to you this morning, this great sight ought to bring about a wonder in your life that brings about a wow factor that you just, man, amazed that God is, is showing Himself strong. Amen. Amen. But you know the amazing thing I told you a minute ago, the amazing thing about that, that this, burn, this bush is just not burning. But I want to show you something you very seldom ever hear preachers talk about, and you probably... Probably don't even make mention of it much yourself. But not only is this fire burning, but this the, the, not only is this bush a burning, but this bush is talking. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Amen. I said that. Yeah, my heart. This is yes, Alabama. My heart. I'm telling you, not only was this bush burning, but this first bush was talking. Right. Notice the Bible says. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. Yeah. And we talk about the bush on fire, but what about that bush talking? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, have you, <laughs> have you ever just thought about this? Man, out of this burning bush comes a sound. I mean, could it be, could it be, could it be, could it be association to Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost and that it became as a rushing mighty wind that the fires of God, but yet there was a voice that's heard. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Man, can you and I, we put emphasis up on wow, this fire's a, this bush is a burning. Look at it. It's not being consumed, but yet the amazing fact is out of the midst of this bush is, is a voice. Yeah. And it's a talking. That's right. Now the amazing thing about this bush is a burning. Anybody could have seen this bush burning, but only Moses heard it talking. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Can I tell you something about the voice of the Lord? <coughs> it's always personal. That's right. Amen. Amen. God. I mean, aren't you glad? <laughs> oh, yes. Aren't you glad this morning that when He calls you, it's always a personal call? Amen. And as, as He began to say to Moses, this is an amazing thing. He used the double call here with Moses. He said, He just didn't say Moses. He said, Moses, Moses. Yeah. A double call. Yeah. Isn't it wonderful out of this bush? 
The bush now burns with fire. The bush is not being consumed. Out of the midst of this bush became a voice. And this voice came calling. And it spoke unto Moses. It knew who Moses was. This is a confirm and a confidence that, that God knows you and I in the midst of the burning fires of many lives. He can call our name. Moses, Moses. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Isn't it wonderful? Yes, it Maybe is. that's all the preaching we need to do today. I'm just telling you, <laughs> just not the bushes are burning, but the bushes are talking. Yes, yes, brother. Amen. If you ever paid much attention to that, that bush just out of the midst of that bush came a voice, and it was the voice of the Lord. And the voice of God said to Moses, Moses, Moses. I want to tell you this morning, the amazing thing about the bush, the bush that was on fire was on the back side of the desert. Yeah, that's right. And can I, can I just pause? This is not the way I was going to go, but this is the way I am going to go this morning. Uh, it's amazing to me when I open Scripture, it just seems like it comes alive. Right. Amen. Right. I mean, I can see that bush burning. Yeah, that's, right. that's right. You may not, can, but I can literally see that bush ablaze, man. Yeah. I'm just telling you, I'm, I, I'm not too far away from it right now. I can actually see that bush burning. Mm, then I can also hear that bush talk. Man, I can hear the call now. I, 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 I'm, hearing, I'm hearing say unto Moses, Moses, Moses. Then I can hear, hear, here's the amazing thing. Out of the midst of this bush, this bush is on fire. This bush is talking. And he said, Moses, Moses, and Moses, angels, this bush back. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Amen. Now you want to talk about something probably be silly to the most people of this world. Yeah. Won't you go out there and start talking to a car? <laughs> <laughs> They'll probably have you locked up down there in some looney tune somewhere. Yeah. Probably got your name <laughs> on a white jacket. Yeah, yeah. They'd say it's pretty crazy that you're talking to a uh, you're talking to a car. Yeah. There's no difference here no. that Moses talking to a bush. Right. I mean, <laughs> I'm just telling you that Moses here, he answers this bush back. Can you imagine? Can I tell you this morning, if a tree spoke my name, I'd probably say, here I am too. <laughs> 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 you probably would too. If you walk around out there and suddenly that bush catches some fire and out of the midst of that bush becomes a voice and that voice calls your name, you'd probably stop in your track too. You'd, pro you'd, pro you'd, probably, you'd, probably, you'd probably couldn't run. <laughs> and it said to Moses, 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 Moses answered him back. It said, Here am I. Here am I. But you know the amazing thing about this is, preacher, that God brought him to this place. Notice if you would in verse 1, the Bible says, And came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. But notice in verse 1, And Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back side of the desert. Can I tell you in the place that Moses was at this time was a desolate place. That's right. That's right. Something about him being desolate at this time. He was on the back side of the desert. Now in my mind, I'm one of these guys and I can see things. I mean, I literally can. I can see a red car already finished. I can see a an uh, empty plot of ground with a house already on it. I'm one of these guys, I just have that imagination. I can see a finished product before you ever start with it. Right. I've been able to do that all my life. But here as I see this and I sense this, that Moses came to the mountain of God, even the horror, he became to the back side, to the back side, to the back side of the desert. It seems as though that this desert had a marking to it. And that Moses came to the back side of the desert. I'm telling you, the back side of the desert. It seemed like there was a wall that was built there that Moses came to this point and God said this was the back of the desert. Yeah, yeah. And then it 
seems as though and that it had boundaries to it and that God said that Moses came to the back side of the desert. When I think about this many times, when I think about the back side of something, when you go to the back, there's a wall. When you go to a side, there's a corner. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And it seems to go to me that God brings Moses to the back side of the desert. It seems as though that God puts Moses in a corner. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Isn't that amazing? Only God knows what's going to go on in that corner. That's right. Right. And now God is going to speak to Moses. Yeah. Out of that burning bush. Moses, Moses. A couple of things I want to show you. Then I'll take my seat. When Moses hears the Lord. There's two things about hearing the voice of God. You must get a hold of this. If you don't, you're going to miss this whole, whole message. Two things about the voice of God are distinct. That's the number one thing that you need to understand that it's distinct, that it's totally different than everybody else's. Oh yes, did you hear what I said this morning? When God speaks to you, it's a distinct voice. It's separated. It's totally different than anybody else. You know that the Lord, can I tell you the night that God called me to salvation, I can tell you for sure that it was the Lord. Yes, amen. amen. Absolutely. Can I tell you when He invited me to come unto Him, I'm telling you here this morning, I knew that it was the Lord. Yeah, yeah, amen. I'm just not convinced, but I'm totally convinced that it was the Lord. Amen. Amen. Something about the voice of the Lord is distinct. What you ought to understand this morning, there's many voices in this world are calling. There's many voices in this world is speaking. There's many voices in this world is a, is, is, is you you can hear it. I mean, I'm telling you, it's reaching, they're calling you, but there is a distinct voice. That's right. right. Amen. I guarantee you this morning, with the promise of that blessed old book. That no one speaks like he speaks. Amen. 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 And can I tell you, there's something about the sound of that voice is powerful. Yes, that's right. Amen. It's distinct. When the Lord was walking here on this earth, when he spoke, the, the, the Bible declares there's not a man speak like he that's spake. Right. And when he spoke one time, those that came after him, he spoke, and his voice was so powerful that they fell backwards. That's right. right. Amen. The authoritation of that voice. That's right. Amen. Right. I'll tell you this morning something about that voice is distinct. You know that it's him. You're not guessing. Can I tell you, you don't have, you're not pulling straws wondering if the Lord has spoke to you, if the Lord has called you. I'm just telling you this morning, it, it, it is a distinct voice. You know that the Lord has spoke. Yeah. 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 Amen. Would you love to have been there that day when the heavens begin to rattle and the earth begin to shake and a booming voice came out of the other galaxies of the other world and the voice said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Would you not love to have been there? I guarantee you, friend, it was, it was it had never been mistaken. It was a distinct voice. God speaking. Now here's the number two. This is where a lot of times people miss it, preacher. And I've heard folks say, oh, well, the Lord spoke to me. Then they go around and do something stupid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. That's right. Hello, this is yes not about it. <laughs> and then you know, you know for sure that that's not of God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because that book is not backing it up. That's right. That's so right. therefore you know it's not of God, but they're saying God's speaking. Yeah, come on, preacher. That's right. Number two. Number one, not only is the voice of God distinct, Moses knew who it was. When God, God began to tell him what to do, when God began to speak to him out of that bush, not only, I'm telling you, the maimment of the bush on fire, that's done gone. The 
bush is still burning, but the amazement of that fire is done gone. But the conversation now is with the voice. And the Lord called unto Moses. Moses said, Hatred him back. Here am I, hatred him back. That's a distinct voice. Number two, you write this down, this is very important. Not only it's a voice of distinction, but it's a voice of direction. Amen. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. But this is what I want you to do, Moses. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place where on thy standing is holy ground. Not only is it a voice of distinction, friend, but it's a voice of direction. When you hear the Lord, when you hear the Lord, there's always distinction in His voice. There's always direction. Now for some reason, He tells Moses to don't come any closer. I mean, He just, matter of fact, matter of fact, whether you and I like this or not, He sort of tells Moses to back off. He says, draw not nigh. Hither! That's far enough, Moses! You see, Moses didn't know what would happen to Moses if he came any further. You and I, when we're backed in a corner, we don't know which way to go. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Amen. Does anybody associate with that with me? But me, maybe it's just me, but it seems as though I'm in a corner, backed in a corner. I don't know which way to go. I'm just sort of locked in a place that I just don't know what to do. Yeah. And God is giving Moses direction because yeah. he's backed in a corner and God is giving him direction yeah. to get out. There's only one way out. Yeah. Right. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> but he sort of backs Moses off when he says, draw not nigh hither, Moses. Right where you at, this is what you ought to do. Yeah. That's right. Put off your shoes. What's that got to do about this thing? You choose is a picture of direction. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, though he fall. He shall not be utterly cast down, but the Lord holdeth him with his hand. That your feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Yeah. Tell you this morning that he said, Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place where we're on thy standing is holy ground. Moses, here's the direction. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And notice what Moses did now. Moses hid his face. For he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the afflictions of my people which are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmaster, for I know their sorrow. Here it is. Here's where I'm stopping. And I am come down to deliver them out of the land. Here, I want you to see the picture now. And I'm going to stop. I never get through it, just stop. He took his shoes off. He put his feet to the ground to associate him with the nation of Israel. This is my ground. You see, there was a distinction, preacher. He was raised in the house of Pharaoh. Of all the treasures of the, Egypt, of the land of Egypt that he was already associated with, now Moses is going to have to claim some ground for his own people. Yeah. And Moses took his shoes off. As God told Joshua. That's right, bro. Same thing. God told Joshua to take his shoes off. For ever else, ever each of the ground that he stepped on is going to be his. Yeah. And he said to Moses, Moses, 
There's something I want you to do. There's something you need to do. Take your shoes off. Take your shoes off because you're going to claim some ground. Because I'm going to deliver my people out of the hands of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land full of milk and honey unto the place of Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, and Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel come unto me. I have also seen the oppression were with the Egyptians oppressed them. Here it is. Moses now, by association, has become the leader of the people of God. That's right. That's right. God said to Moses out of the bush, Moses, Moses, this is what you need to do. Your people has been in bondage. They've been in a coma for a long time. But we're fixing to bring them out. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Can I tell you on this out of the application of you and I being saved. Some of you have been in a corner for long, too long. About time you heard God again. Heard him, hear, hear Him calling you. And say, yes, Lord, I'll do. Yes, Lord, I'll do. Let's stand our feet. Father, we love you. Yes. I thank you this morning for this time that you've let us preach. For helping this people. There's some in here this morning just needs to hear the Lord again. Some in here needs to follow direction. You give them direction, they need to follow. It. Oh God, help them, help them, help them this morning, in Jesus' name. Man, we'll come and just choose something on that piano to play for us if you would.